Yo, the white wolf is here. What's good, everyone? Hey, where's Kenny at? Where the F is Kenny at? Oh, okay. Methathon so thing for the thing here. I'll have to check that out. Appreciate you. I'm 37. That's natural to just start losing your hair, right? All right, so what's up? What are we talking about? Don't let me waste your night. What are you saying? Why are you concealing the truth about banana-shaped earth? Ask me some questions. What's up? Hey, thanks, Sandy. Yeah, I'm safe. <laughs> my world's kind of wacky, though. Like last year when I had some person show up to my freaking house at like 3 a.m. when I was walking home. I shouldn't have been at the bar, you know. When you put yourself in those positions, you put yourself in positions. Yeah, this person like met me out in front of my house just randomly. I used to live in a tiny town of like a thousand people on a freaking dead end street. And this person, they're like, hey, could you help me? My uh, motorcycles broke down up the street. And this guy was like a scary biker looking dude. And I'm like, oh, really? That's odd. Where are you going? Oh, I'm going to uh, Elko. And uh, like, where are you from? Uh, Arizona? <laughs> it's like, what are you doing here at 3 a.m.? It's like you were almost waiting for me. He's like, yeah, just walk up here. I'm like, um, I'm going to get in my car and go up there. And he's like, no, no, just walk with me. Yeah, just walk with me. I'm like, no, I'll see you up there. I just like talk through him. And, he's, and then he looked, he was like kind of frustrated that I wasn't just walking up a t blacked out dead end street where it just literally leads into the mountain and so got in my car grabbed my piece and drove up there and yeah it was the most sketchy situation I'm like you're stuck no your bike isn't stuck it's parked right there what are you talking about so I was like oh great here comes the ambush they're finally here they said they'd come they said they would <laughs> here they are I didn't get out of the car. Just had my pointed at him through the door. He couldn't see it. He's like, come on, you're not going to help me? It's like, this dude really wants to kill me right now. That's crazy. And all his little buddies are probably about to jump out of the bushes as soon as I get out of here. He's like, come on. Come on, I need your help, man. I'm like, you're not stuck. I rode motorcycles for 15 years. You're not stuck. You're gonna have to move that bike. I'm talking to him. My car's still running. I'm like checking my mirrors and stuff. I'm like ambush, you know, alert. This dude, he's like, he's like, oh no, he's like, my back is bad. <laughs> he was trying to rock the bike. I was like, wow, you're laying it down thick, dude. Really? You just gave me the back story? Then what are you doing riding a motorcycle from Arizona to Elko, Nevada, at 3 a.m. if your back's bad? Oh, dude, you're here to kill me. And the spot he wanted me to be in was, like, literally bent over in front of him. Like, he would have been right there, and I've been pushing his bike backwards. <laughs> I mean, that was a weird situation. I'm like, no, that's, that's right, dude. With all the stuff I'm involved with, a couple months before that, I was on the news. CNN was trying to discredit me, defame me, whatever me. It was when I was blown up on TikTok right before I got deleted. I was getting a thousand followers a day for nine days straight, and then they froze my account and deleted me. It's crazy because, like, I've been on YouTube for years, but I had, like, the same amount of followers than, you know, and I got that in a matter of days. So it's like, what's going on, YouTube? Am I shadow banned? Just is what it is. I'm not crying about it. But yeah, these fools tried to kill me, man. You, you kidding me? What else do you know, Sandy says. Okay, so as far as Kenny goes, a source told me uh, that was confirmed by law enforcement that in 2017, there was a loan taken out, potentially in Kenny's name, and connected to his vehicle that was found out at the sheep range that vehicle was given or absorbed by 
his brother, Raymond Veach, who, by the way, after looking at pictures, Raymond, I'm not telling, I'm not saying that you tried to kill me, but the dude that showed up that night kind of resembled him and looked like him. I'm just saying. And it was kind of weird because I've talked to other people who know of Raymond and they they told me some stuff that's kind of disturbing about you know just the family in general and so yeah Kenny's freaking brother could have potentially been over here trying to kill me to shut me up and stop me from investigating what I don't know you know because if if he took out a loan then he faked his death now we're talking about potential like insurance claim type stuff but there hasn't been as far as I know and this is also confirmed by law enforcement I spoke to a detective there hasn't been a check cashed in Kenny's name okay so the life insurance thing is kinda not there but they could have just not did that because they because they knew that it would point fingers directly to whoever's cash and checks but who knows they might not have had a life insurance policy so that's kind of what I know Sandy which is odd there was a basically like a title loan taken out on his vehicle but in his name so that's kind of weird because even if you absorbed I don't know I guess you could have a vehicle that was previously in a deceased person's name which their type their name would still be on the title you could just take to a company and they don't care they're just like all right whatever it's it's an asset so we'll do the loan we'll take your title and it's going to be labeled in this name but then that kind of doesn't make sense because they would have to tie it to a name and apparently it is Kenny's name for that loan that was taken out so kind of strange and it's like does the title loan company verify if you're dead or not when you walk in to like get a loan sir it says you're deceased like they don't have a, a database for checking that did you ever explain why you thought you threw up instantly when you arrived the first M cave hunt? That was the fourth M cave hunt. Like in the video, I started getting sick and throwing up like about a hundred yards after leaving the site and walking back to my vehicle. But at the site, and you can hear it on camera, you can kind of see the life coming out of me. I start coughing and something I could feel it like getting I was trying to like still walk through the words I was saying just fluently and but I you could hear me kind of like uh, <clears throat> like like there was something scratchy in my throat weird <coughs> how are they even like <coughs> holding themselves up you know <coughs> and then right there there's a whole piece of a, a rock missing I'm not saying I'm debunking anything here, solving anything, but I think this is where Kenny witnessed that cave. You can see I was pale a little bit, and I don't know. It, me rewatching it, I can tell because I know what I look like. But that was kind of strange. Also, when I was listening on the thing and I, I put on the, the video, listening for sounds or something, you hear a little goo goo. just so happened to be right when I was listening in to see if I could hear any sounds or feel any vibrations it's kind of strange to kind of talk about like what that was why I got sick the land I was on borders Creech Air Force Base okay and then to like the north 15 miles or whatever you got Nellis Air Force Base and then you got the test site we'll call it area 15 backwards and that's up you know maybe 40 miles or so I don't know from there and it's all triangulated around where I'm at those three bases the military has tried to take over that area of the sheep range I'd say multiple times and it keeps getting denied for whatever reason probably they, they just don't have a big enough reason to take it that they, they can talk about but 
they're probably doing all types of stuff out there as well as allowing private contractors to do all types of stuff out there as we know there was a bunch of testing done there from like the 50s and where uh, maybe other decades I don't know so there's a lot of potential radiation that's just sitting out there and it's just this park now where they think oh okay the radiation's gone or maybe they just don't care to even talk about it and they're allowing people the public to walk in there and potentially get sick another theory is they are dumping toxic waste and all types of stuff nuclear waste in caves all the time and that that could be done by private companies who are doing like totally off the book stuff or by the military you don't know who's doing it, it they just know they got to get rid of it and there's a way where they a method of digging out these tunnels and then digging down tunnels and that area has a lot of unearthed dirt around it when you look on the bird's eye view even google map you can tell there's just like all this dirt that doesn't match the normal landscape and yeah there's a lot of mines out there so okay they could just be just from old mining sure just like there's a mine shaft up there where kenny kind of does his saying oh i got my gun i'm going back you know check it out type stuff so i mean a lot of that going on out there but the other theory is yeah i was getting freaking targeted by some kind of area denial technology that is public i mean the military not to mention like what they have and they we don't hear about but they have that for like crowds and stuff you can just hit people with a frequency and it'll just it'll make them do exactly what i did and just get them out of that area i don't know they could probably be doing it with like drones you know it's not even people don't have to be out there and then the other possibility is there's these beings and creatures that are freaking living out there well how can i say that well in 2016 when i hiked with chris something stalked our campsite we spent two nights out there and three days in that same area that same probably within another hundred feet of where i was where i was getting sick on my last hike it was stalking our it was stalking us and it i drew my gun on it and it freaking went away but i didn't hear it walk away it was like banging sticks and stuff all around us well over here behind me and then over here so kind of creepy right and then on my jenkins hike in i think it's part two you'll see a pinned comment where i tell you which spot to go to on the video when i'm filming one of those sealed off caves right next to what looks to be the covered up m cave there's a like a little peephole and i kind of walk up to it and as I walk up to it, you can see a little freaking eyeball looking at me through the, the peephole. And it's a slit eye. Anyways, it's like, what is that? And it's like when you start to get into all this other research about other beings and reptilians and all this stuff, and you, you start to see evidence, and it's like, are all these people lying about 
their accounts, especially when their pages and their stuff doesn't get publicity, they're getting deleted or videos removed. There's like a clear effort to cover up some of those things. And then, yeah, like all these people are just crazy, huh? They're just saying that. Type. No, I don't. I don't believe that. And I've seen it now. You know, I videoed it. These caverns that are just through the earth, and they still have a habitat or whatever you want to call that for these like raptor type beings that are left from the dinosaurs who were embedded in the ground. Like that's the only way you would survive. When you think about it, is if you were tunneled into the ground and you weren't on the surface where apparently it was just all you know destroyed and you have these caves that are around the world that Kenny was discovering that now I've kind of like rediscovered and there's something looking at me through the cave wall and then even somebody else pointed out there's something below that Joseph pointed out that there looks like to be like another face below the keyhole that also kind of moves weird and it's like part of the rock it's really strange another thing is both of those sealed off spots to the right of what i think is the m cave cover-up you have these this black symbol like an ouroboros it's and that's a snake eating its own tail basically a black and they're on both spots but there is an interesting black mark on the top Did, they, did this used to go down or something? And you can see it in the recap video and just the videos that I shot while I'm over there. I kind of unintentionally showed it on the recap video where I stop and it's like sealed off mine. You know, what is this? Anyways, kind of strange because uh, the Ouroboros sign from research I've done is an indicator or a basic warning to other people and beings and whatever that this is a reptilian territory type space like that is crazy how does that like when you get all these things to start matching up eventually it's like okay there might be something to this and then you have you know people are talking about dog man and Sasquatch, desert Sasquatch, sure, man. I feel that there are a lot of things out there we are just not, the public are not being told about, and a lot of it happening on state park land, federal park land. If you follow David Politis' information and material, he talks about it all the time, all these people are going missing on freaking federal land, and it's like, why? Because maybe the government knows these raptoid beings or these sasquatch beings or something that's where they hang out and they are just respecting their space by not doing anything and they know that they are abducting people or eating people or whatever and that's just like a deal they have set up to where i don't know and watch you're seeing elon and like elon musk and all this stuff in space oh we made contact on yeah no shit, dude Mars has been filled with humans since like the late 30s, according to a lot of sources, and the freaking Fourth Reich, Germans, yeah, they dipped out, they had the technology, they just left this place and went to another planet, Mars, yeah, chew on that, but first stopped in freaking Argentina and Antarctica, and you got, you know, Admiral Byrd that went down there with the entire freaking navy of everything, and got his ass kicked and came back. But he was down there on an exploration. Man, come on, man. It's just all lies. And he got Project Paperclip or whatever, you know. Like, so the European Union is basically now in America with that happening. And But they had to do that because Germany was like 20 years ahead of us technologically and had all the anti-gravitic technology like they were they were the ones flying over the White House in the 50s that was like a huge story it was like 52 53 where there's all these saucers floating over the the White House 
Yeah, those were Germans. They're like, oh, it's aliens. Like, nobody's even talking about that. The, the news just covers up everything. And there's these these campaigns that just go out and just say, oh, no, that never happened. That's not a thing. No, aliens aren't real. No, that's not. It's sick. I, don't, I can't even watch the freaking mainstream or news or anything. I can't watch any of it. It's all crap. So, but back to getting sick at the MK location, right? It could have been some kind of energetic attack from a being that's trying to put you down. Like humans can do that to other humans. Energetically attack them and pull them, put them on the ground, like without touching them. That's a thing. If you look up the martial art Mo Pai, that one has people in it that can do it, but it's an energetic type thing. And we are all energy and frequency. And if you know how to master that, you can take it from somebody. Energy vampires. I'm sure you've heard that term before. It's a thing. So when I was starting to throw up and stuff, I could feel something hitting me, like uh, just sucking the freaking life out of me. And I started hearing things in the bushes. I'm kind of looking around, but it's like, you know, there's a bunch of stuff moving around out there, little bunnies and birds and stuff. So it's like, you can't think. And at the same time, I got to get out of there. I'm walking. So I'm not going to spend a bunch of time investigating everything. And I'm trying to be optimistic and positive as well, because you have to stay that way if you're going to survive out there. And then even when, you know, I'm walking out of there and I'm hearing stuff, it's like, dude, I was kind of just in denial of it. I was like, nope, just freaking bighorn sheep. We're good to go. But I'm going to pull my weapon out, that's for sure. Like for the last, it was probably four or five miles all downhill as the crow flies. But it was probably like six or seven, you know, zigzagging through. And I remember having to pull my gun out because that two things were following me out and walking close, like 30, 40 feet, one over there, one over there. And it's like... It's close enough to where if it just took off sprinting towards me, even let's just say it's a, a mountain lion that's just super hungry and is stalking me. If it just took off, I wouldn't be able to like unholster, you know, put eyes on it and take shots. It wouldn't. So I had to have my light out and my gun out. But even when my gun was out, I was kind of like, okay, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. You know, nothing. I'm chill. And I think it knew that I had my gun out by how it just held its distance. Because it was kind of like closing in, and then it's like, okay, that's close enough. And I pulled it out. And I think if we're talking about camo dudes, you know, special ops, freaking night crawlers out there following me out, because I was in an area they don't want me in, they could have thought I was actually recording with my phone, camera, whatever, with my light, because my light was just on. And it's like, they have certain protocols, it's like you can't be seen. So they could have thought I was streaming. They could have thought of anything. That might have been what helped me not get ran up on by them. I don't know. We'll never know, but we may know. Long and short, something was energetically attacking me to the point where, yeah, I had to sit down and meditate and kind of regroup. And that was, I was having one of those moments like, I'm in over my head a bit, but we're going to get out of here because I'm not going to die like this, that's for sure. That's not happening.